Do you want a simple way to reduce your risk of Hashimoto's by 22% just by using two supplements? Out of all autoimmune diseases out there, Hashimoto's still remains one of the most difficult to treat and difficult to diagnose. A big part of the reason for this is that doctors aren't too worried about the destruction of the thyroid gland because they believe that the problem can easily be resolved with a little bit of thyroid medication. If this doesn't sit well with you, you aren't alone. Most patients with Hashimoto's don't like the idea of their own body destroying their thyroid gland and becoming reliant on thyroid medication for the rest of their lives. Which is why this study is very interesting. This placebo-controlled study followed 25,000 people over the course of five years and found something very interesting. People who took a combination of fish oil and vitamin D saw a decrease in their risk of all autoimmune diseases by 22%. The results of this study can't be understated. In a world where very few treatments are available to patients who have autoimmune disease, here we have a study showing that you can mitigate your risk of these terrible diseases with some simple, relatively inexpensive, over-the-counter supplements. This is huge both for patients with existing thyroid disease, which is probably many of you listening to this right now, but also for many of you who are just trying to stay healthy and prevent thyroid problems. So if you have a strong family history of thyroid problems, this is exactly the type of thing that you'd want to look into because it means you may be able to prevent your future thyroid disease from occurring. And don't worry, there's also some beneficial information in here for those who already have thyroid problems because these treatments can also be beneficial for this group of patients as well. With this in mind, let's talk about some of the takeaways from this study so you can learn from it and hopefully start applying the information right away. If you just want the meat and you aren't interested in my comments, I'm hurt, but I understand. Here are the doses of the supplements that were used in this study. 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3 as cholecalciferol taken daily and one gram of fish oil that contained 460 milligrams of EPA and 380 milligrams of DHA. These two supplements taken daily were enough to provide that 22% reduction in risk of all autoimmune diseases that I discussed previously. Having said that, I would still recommend sticking around till the end because I think that there are some tweaks that you can make to this regimen to make it even more effective. And I'm gonna share those at the end of this video. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about some takeaways. Takeaway number one is that the reduction in autoimmune disease that was stated here is probably higher than 22%. The official stated benefit from the study was a 22% reduction in all autoimmune diseases when both fish oil and vitamin D3 were taken over the course of five years but the actual number is probably much higher than that, somewhere around 30 to 40%. The reason for this is that the researchers that conducted the study could only include those patients who had verifiable autoimmune disease in their calculations. They were not able to include people who have what we call probable autoimmune disease. And those people who have probable autoimmune disease make up a huge number of the people that suffer from the effects of autoimmune disease. There are plenty of people out there, perhaps even you listening to this right now, who have pretty much all of the symptoms of Hashimoto's thyroiditis or insert any other autoimmune disease here, but they don't have the markers in their blood to prove that it's there. These people are either really early on in their disease progression, which means the markers will show up at some point in the future, or they have an atypical type of autoimmune disease which gets missed by standard lab tests. In both cases, autoimmune disease is still present it's just one can be documented officially and the other cannot. But that doesn't mean that treatments won't help people in both categories. A perfect example of this, by the way, is the condition known as seronegative Hashimoto's. This is a case of full-blown autoimmune thyroid disease, but these patients do not have positive antibodies in their blood. All this is to say that if you're thinking about using these treatments, just realize that their benefit is probably bigger than the 22% that I discussed previously. This is just even more reason for you to want to use these treatments. Takeaway number two is that the benefits to autoimmune disease here apply to all autoimmune diseases, not just Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Even though there are a huge number of autoimmune diseases out there, they all have one thing in common. They cause a disruption of the immune system which results in damage to the body. The location of this damage differs from autoimmune disease to autoimmune disease, but the underlying cause is always the same, immune dysregulation. This is important because if you have one autoimmune disease, you are much more likely to get another. Autoimmune diseases like vitiligo and celiac disease often go hand in hand with patients who already have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And this is true for all autoimmune diseases, not just for Hashimoto's. 
So if you are given the opportunity to potentially prevent the onset of new autoimmune diseases, you will definitely want to take it. Takeaway number three is that the longer you use these treatments, the bigger the benefit you will see. When looking at the results, researchers found that if they only looked at three of the last five years of the study results, the benefit of taking vitamin D alone jumped to 39% from the 22% that I mentioned. In other words, there was a decrease in the risk of autoimmune disease in patients who had consistently been taking vitamin D for two years straight that was almost twice that of the entire study. What gives? Well, one conclusion that we can draw from this is that vitamin D needs time to build up into the system in order to provide the majority of its benefits. This is really important to understand if you are a patient who is taking vitamin D because it's typically not a supplement that provides noticeable benefits once you start taking it. Most people just take vitamin D because they were told they were low or deficient. But even patients who have a already low vitamin D don't really notice huge benefits or huge differences in how they feel once they start taking it. But I'm here to say that even though you might not feel that difference, it's definitely working in the body. And in order to work, it needs time to build up. So if you've been taking vitamin D for a while and haven't been noticing much of a difference, that's okay. It's still doing its job behind the scenes, so stay the course. Based on this information, we can probably also say that vitamin D is best used as a preventative agent as opposed to a therapeutic agent. What this means is that it's far better to keep your vitamin D at a healthy level, thereby preventing diseases from occurring, than it is to take vitamin D once you already have a problem like an autoimmune disease. It's still beneficial in both cases, it's just even more beneficial in the preventative case. Takeaway number four is that even if you already have autoimmune thyroid disease or any autoimmune disease, it's still a good idea to take both fish oil and vitamin D. The study that I've been mentioning this entire time focused on the benefit that vitamin D and fish oil have on the prevention of autoimmune disease, not necessarily for the efficacy of these treatments if you already have an existing autoimmune disease. But I'm here to tell you, even if you do already have an autoimmune disease, it's still a very good idea to consider taking both of these supplements. Here's why. Not only do we have research which shows that taking both of these supplements can be beneficial to patients with Hashimoto's, we also have a lot of anecdotal evidence to suggest that they're effective as well. From a research and physiologic standpoint, here's what we know. Both fish oil and vitamin D play an important role in regulating inflammation and the immune system. Vitamin D, for instance, regulates genes involved in inflammation and the innate and acquired immune system. We see vitamin D receptors on white blood cells like monocytes and activated T cells, and we've seen studies showing that taking vitamin D can balance the Th1 to Th2 ratio. Likewise, several additional studies have shown that taking fish oil can be beneficial if you have autoimmune disease. This is most likely because of its impact that it has on balancing arachidonic acid levels which are known to be immunostimulatory. On top of this, I've personally seen many patients with Hashimoto's take both of these supplements and do very well clinically. Clinically, they can see a reduction in their thyroid antibodies or an improvement in their symptoms or both. And takeaway number five, you can probably get even better results by tweaking the amount of vitamin D and the amount of fish oil that you're taking daily. While I think the researchers did a good job in this study, it's evident that they were trying to apply broad recommendations to a wide group of people. One way this backfired was in patients who were obese or overweight. The researchers noticed that patients who were overweight saw less of a benefit than patients who had a lean body mass. You might conclude from this that patients who are overweight just don't respond as well to vitamin D, but I don't think that's actually what's happening here. We know from the study that everyone, regardless of their weight, were given 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3 every day. But we also know from other studies that because vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, people who are overweight need higher doses of vitamin D to saturate their tissues. Had obesity and weight been accounted for when determining vitamin D dose, it's very likely that the patients who were overweight would have seen the same benefit that the leaner patients experienced on the lower dose of vitamin D. This same sort of thing probably applies to the fish oil dose as well. Participants in this study were given one gram or 1,000 milligrams of fish oil to take every day, but there's likely even more benefit at higher doses. So if you're looking at this study to determine how much you should be taking, I would consider these doses as the absolute bare minimum. I can't tell you exactly how much you should take personally, but I can give you some guidelines based on my own experience. If you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and you're looking to supplement with vitamin D, a good range to take is somewhere between 2,000 IUs and 5,000 IUs daily. But some patients require doses as high as 10,000 IUs daily. 
And rarely, some patients are using doses as high as 50,000 IUs. This is anywhere from two to five times a higher amount than the dose of vitamin D that was used in this study. For fish oil, most people find benefit taking two to three grams per day, which is 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams. Again, this is roughly two to three times a higher dose than was used in the study. But I've also seen some studies which use fish oil doses as high as five grams per day. In a perfect world, you would do your best to get as much fish oil, EPA, DHA, and vitamin D from food sources as possible. That means eating something like two to three servings of a low mercury fish every single week because fish are the best sources of both fish oil and vitamin D. If you personally don't like fish or you can't get it for whatever reason, then you can make up the difference with supplements. While vitamin D and fish oil are great for treating Hashimoto's, did you know that there are other supplements that you can take as well? If you want to learn about additional supplements that can help improve your thyroid and lower thyroid antibodies, then I'd recommend checking out this video next.